Hello everyone. Just a random fun day art journal. Um, we're going to use some Jane Davenport. I got this a long time ago. These are what's on the back. This is a 5x8. Um, because I have these little stamped words on tissue paper, um, I've had them for quite some time. It is a Tim Holtz collection. It's his stuff to say. So, yeah, and then I have some, I got this off of Amazon. Uh, there's the number for that. This I bought a long time ago from, looks like Hobby Lobby. It was on clearance. Whoopsie. Falling over. Um, I'll use some stencils that I have. This is a Tim Holtz stencil. I think it's burlap. And then I have these. Um, I don't know where I got these. They were probably from Michael's a long time ago. And we're going to use watercolors. Um, these I got off of Amazon. Also, the page has been gessoed. I'm going to use some modeling paste. So, let me put all this aside. Let's get started. Okay, I'm going to take some modeling paste because, like I said, this is already gessoed. And I wish this would behave a little better, but that's okay. I'm just going to put a thin amount on because I really just have mm, no patience for the drying so I'm just gonna spread it real thin Sorry if my hands are in the way. And just go farther down the page. I know it's probably hard to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to give the watercolor somewhere to, to run. But I need to leave a space for my quote and for whatever I piece I use out of the Jane Davenport. And I might cut into some of this. I don't know. Let me close this up because this stuff dries up really quick. Okay. Take this off. Yeah, I need to I need to cut some of that out. I'm just gonna take what's left of here and scrape it onto another page. Cause this stencil is very flimsy very thin which is fine it'll be easier to clean All right now so I want to take out some of this so that's what I'll do and I'll just put it over on a different page for something else Oh, I don't want that big clump there. And I want... I'd like this in the middle. But it's probably not going to suit what I need.
Hmm. Maybe I'll just flatten it out a little bit and add some more cuts into it. I just, I don't want it perfect. I don't want it to really look like whatever that wood grain stencil was. I want it to be different. So we're just going to mess with it a little bit. And I'll take whatever's on here, put it back on my finger, and add it. Maybe I'll drag it down some, change its shape a little bit. Okay. Let me dry this. Be right back. Okay, so I'm really not happy with the way the wood grain looks. So I'm going to take the Tim Holtz burlap one and I'm going to throw some of that in there because I, I, I want it to look different. I don't want it to be wood grain. I just wanted it to be different. So I'll come in where I see. Just go over the top here. And I'll scrape that off. I know I'm probably mashing the daylights out of the other stuff, but that's all right. Um, I'll come over here. I like that better. But I think I'm just going to move it a little more. And I'll add some more. It's all in the in the fun of, of learning to work with what you have. Change it to the way you want it for a whole different outlook. And this is going to be perfect for what I was wanting. Excellent. Now I'll just, if there's any on here, I'll scrape it off. Over here, flip it over, scrape it off. And I'll just soak these. And when I did the stamping of the words, I secondary stamped off of here, so that starts another background. I have just cleaned off the modeling paste on top of it, so that'll give it some extra texture for the next page. Close this back up. Now we'll dry it. Okay, see, there's the wood grain, but there's the burlap texture, and I just mashed it around a little bit. Be right back. Okay, um, this is the journal I have. It's a mixed media Strathmore visual journal that I'm working in. So, let me, I've got some tissue paper underneath because it's, it's going to be like a wet, because I'll be tilting it off. Um, this will be as dry as ever because you're just going to add more wet medium on top of this so it, it'll get wet again so I'm not gonna bother now I'm going to add some stamped images I'm gonna use this with some stays on ink And let's see, I don't want the whole image, I just want some of it. So that's where I'm going to stamp. Um, I want this one that looks like writing and maybe some of the lines. So I'll just pick it up, put it on, 
come over here and just press it down real quick I like that and I can turn it and just keep going and grab some there there and there and then I'll clean it off on the tissue paper because I will use this tissue paper for backgrounds all I do is go to Dollar Tree buy a pack of tissue paper or I get it from my work it's all good all right, um, I want some of these. They're like little speckles. And this time I'm going to put those on a stamping block. Just come over here, pick it up. And it kind of fills in where this didn't get. And I can do secondary. All right, that looks good. I'm not gonna. I don't want to go overboard with the texture and the stamping and everything. All right, so let me get this out of the way here. I'll just clean this off. And just put my stamp back in here. Okay, I'm trying to figure out the composition of how I want this. Um, like I said, this is what I'm using, the Jane Davenport Journal Tattoos. They're just rub-on transfer sheets. Um, it's a pair of set of eyes. I was going to use this, but it's just too small. And I was going to use her, but eh, I wound up with the eyes. So that's what I'll use. And I might just try to cut this and see, because this is very thin tissue paper. And there we go. And maybe like that. I don't know. We'll see. We're not even there yet. So let me pick these up. I will find some little tray to put them in so they don't get blown all over the place. We're done with the texture paste. Now it's time to have some fun with the watercolors. Hopefully this turns out the way I want it to. It could, it could not. We'll never know until we try. Alright, so she's kind of bluish, purplish. Yeah. Alright, so these are my colors that I have. I really like this watercolor set. It works very nice. Very nice. Show you the front of it again. I got it off of Amazon. Okay. Now, let me find a watercolor brush, which is just a round brush. I've got this one. Boy, this is hard. This already came apart. Oh no. That's all right. I'll mash it back down as best I can. And I'm just going to add some water to my watercolors. Now, let's hope this works out right. I don't want to go that way. I need to go this way. I want to go... Hmm. No, not in the coffee. Holy smokes, that would have been just great. Hmm. 
This says Cobalt and Cerulean. This is an ultramarine, which is an intense blue. And that's what I want to start with. Or should I start with indigo? Well, it is what it is. And I'm just going to lay it on pretty thick. I didn't get very much on that one, did I? That's all right. Um, because what I want is almost like what you would get if you used like brushes or those powdered pigments like the Ken Oliver and color bursts. That's what they're called, color bursts. Um, I don't have those. So, and those are very expensive, which is fine. I'll create my own. And we'll just turn it around, hit it with a little bit of water, and let it do its own. Because it'll follow the lines. Of, oops, let me bring you back out a little bit so you can see better. It will follow the lines Is there anything on the other side that I don't, don't care about? <laughs> Alright, so I need to go a darker blue. So I think I'll go indigo. And just put it kind of randomly. In here and I'll hit it with some water and I'll let the indigo run to wherever it wants to go oh it's mixing with whatever's on the back that's okay all right I like that Okay, let's pull it up a little bit. All right, um, let's see. I think I'll go with some Prussian blue, just on the outer parts. Just a little bit. And I'll use it very wet on my brush. Just to add a difference. Probably didn't want to go that far, but that's fine. I'll just take it up there. And I'll add just a spritz of water because I want it to I want it to act a little different. I don't want such blocked off edges. Do you know what I mean? I want softer, softer looking edges. And it can bleed down. All right, now before I change colors, I'm, I'm gonna dry this because I don't know what's gonna happen if I hit it with too much. Though, hmm. yeah, I don't wanna create mud. So I'm going to dry this and I'll be right back. Okay. So I'm looking. Let's see. Let's pick her eyes up here. She just doesn't want to cooperate sometimes. I have this backwards, but that's fine. I can do it any way I want. I'm looking to see what other color I want to put in here. Um... But I don't want it too close to her eyes. Her eyes have quite the bit of purple in them. I don't know if you can see that. Anyway. Um, 
I already have ultramarine, Prussian blue, and some intense blue. Hmm. Should we go with a red? But that's going to make too much purple. I think I'm going to put a little bit of... I don't know. I'm just going to pick it up, wing it, and see what happens. That's all I can do. I'll go burnt sienna. But I'll only do it thinly. Because I don't know what it's going to look like. And I don't want to ruin it. So that's what I'll do. I'll just put it on the brush, pick it up, drop it down, and help it do whatever it wants to do. I'll put that right there. Because I don't want the I don't want nasty mud. I really don't. And that's just making a nasty mess. I don't like that. So I'll just put what, whatever's left on here and let it run a little bit and then run off. I'll pick up what's left on here because that's just not what I wanted. I didn't want mud. So... I mean, it's very vintagey looking. I'll give it that. I'll just do one more right here. And I'll just let it run and follow where it wants to go. I'm going to bring it back down. I may even put a little here. See, because it made it look very muddy. I don't like muddy. All right, so I'll get rid of that. So that's not a that's not a that's a no go. Um. Hmm. Okay. So what's next? Um, I might try a red, which would be permanent rose. Hmm. Yeah, why not? All we can do, but I'm really drawn to, what is this? Where is Crimson Lake? This one right here. It's in between a red and a pink, I guess. So, just going to put that on and let it move a little bit. And then come back but that's it's it turns to purple and I just it's not what I wanted so I'll just wet it let it travel down and get off my paper let's try a different red See what happens with a red or red. Yep, turns to purple again. That's all right. This is all just learning. Having fun too, though. So let's go alizarin crimson down here. As if we have to. We can just add more blue once we dry this. I need a deep red, which would have been this Crimson Lake. And that's what I'll do. 
just add it, hit it real quick. And I'll let it run. That looks better. I like that better. All right, let me dry that before that gets ruined. I'll be right back. Okay, so it's somewhat dry. It's never going to be fully dry unless you let it dry for days. I'm going to add some white in here because this is just gesso. Very, very, mm. anyway, let me get my white paint. Okay, I have the white paint that I'm going to use. And I'm just going to put some over here. And I'll pick up the same brush. Dab it off a little bit. I just want it watery. Because I'm just going to put this in through here. To soften my edges a little bit. If I don't like how dark the brown is, I pick this up. I can come over into here, soften that up, but I really just wanted it here so that it's not so jessoey. And I'm actually dragging a little bit of the blue over this way. And I'll show you what I mean. Let me get this top part up here. Soften that up a little bit. If you can see the a little bit of the blue that I dragged over. So let me dry this. I'll just clean this up real quick before it dries. And I'll be right back. Okay, I think it needs some white splashes. So, yes, 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 I'm going to do that. But I, I have white. Hmm. It made myself a white spray bottle. Okay, so I'm going to use that. Just with some white paint. And... There. I like that. That's what I was looking for. Why won't you stay on? Mm, Cap never wants to stay on. All right. Dry that. Be right back. Okay. I think that's going to be the placement for me because I'm just fighting with it so much. It's it's crazy. So what I need to do is I'll put the eyes down first. And they're just, like I said, the journal tattoos, which are rub-ons from Jane Davenport. And I think I'm going to put them right up here. Because you got to be careful where you lay this down. Because that's where it is going to be. Because it'll stick down to whatever's on here first. So let me find... A bone folder or anything you want. Um, let me see. Like here. And just gently work it down. You'll see that where it's going to lift off, where it's lifting off the other piece of paper. You can even put this on there after you're done to make sure it's all down. And just gently work it on there. I find these these stick very well. I do like these. Because I have a lot of other rub ons that I have. And then I'm just going to find a corner. And I'll come up here. See if that's going to stick yet. Nope, I got to work on this a little bit more. Only because I have so many other mediums on here. Um, 
oof, what I got on there? I'll use this one. Um, that it's going to have a hard time sticking in certain places. So let's see if we can't get that to stay down. Now I'll come over here again. Actually, I'll come to this corner. And just work it down as I pull it up. I know you probably can't see what I'm doing. I know, I'm sorry about that. But what I'm doing is I'm putting this down as I pull it up. to see what's going to stick and what's not going to stick. And honestly, if it doesn't all stick, I'm not too crazy unhappy about that. There. That looks good. I like that. Now, I'm going to take this shiny side that was on this. I'm going to put it over it, and I'm just going to give it another... There. That's down nice. And there we go. There's that. I love that. That looks good together. I know my little white splashes um, faded some. I'm not bothered by that. All right now. I can actually clean this up just a little bit. You've got to be very careful with tissue paper. Let's see how I want this. I've got to see. I like that. I mean, may not be the placement everybody else wanted, but it's the placement I'm going to use. I'm going to use my matte medium to put them down. And move this stuff out of the way. Just find an old grungy brush, which I have plenty of them because I am so hard on brushes. This one will work. All right, so. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just put it on the brush, pick it up, lay it down, because I don't want it to reactivate my watercolors too much. Just put that there. And I want it to be see-through. That's why I use tissue paper, but you gotta be careful because tissue paper can and will tear. And I'll just get rid of some of the excess here so that's less I have to cover. And just come over here and put some down. And I think I'll go over her eyes just to keep whatever it is in its place. Nope, gotta be careful. That'll work. I'll just push it up. Nothing is going to be perfect. I kind of like the saying. Because it's asking you, if your fears and dreams were in the same place, 
Would the fear stop you from following your dream? A lot of times that's going to happen because a lot of people don't like um, dealing with the unknown. That's, that's, that's fear. So, I don't know. I, depending on the dream, I guess. If it were all my dreams and wishes and hopes, then yeah, I'd go there. Because you gotta fight fear. But there's our page for today. Um, you can do so much more with it if you want. You can keep going. You can keep adding things. Um, this is where I'm going to stop because this is a long video. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.